Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about a topic that a lot of Mac users are curious about. Gaming on the Mac. For a long time, it was something people laughed at, but things have changed both in terms of hardware and software. It's still a challenge, but it's one that's getting easier to deal with. In this video, I'll talk about how gaming on the Mac has evolved and also introduce you to some ways you can play Windows games on your Mac, like using crossover or parallels. I'll also show you a website where you can check if a specific game will run on your Mac and how well. But let's get started now. Since Apple switched to its own chips, things have improved a lot technically. The performance is great, the energy efficiency is impressive, and many games run much better than they used to. The problem, though, is still the same. A lot of games simply don't release natively for Mac OS. Most studios develop mainly for Windows, which makes gaming on the Mac quite difficult. Luckily, there are a few solid workarounds. With Parallels Desktop, you can virtualize Windows on your Mac, meaning you create a Windows environment where you can install and play games just like you would on a regular PC. This works surprisingly well with many titles, some of which are shown on the screen right now. Now let's move on to the pros and cons of Parallels. The advantage of Parallels is that it's easy to use and highly compatible. The downside is that you're simulating an entire Windows system, which uses up a lot of RAM and CPU. On base model Macs, that often means there isn't much power left over for the actual game. To avoid that, there's another app called Crossover. Crossover is the second option. It's based on Wine and allows you to run Windows games directly on macOS without having to install Windows at all. That saves system resources and, in some cases, even delivers better performance than Parallels. The advantages of Crossover are the support of DirectX 12, as well as the much lower usage of system resources. The disadvantages are that it's less compatible than Parallels and that it's harder to use. As you can see, I have again shown some compatible games on the screen. Even though these two programs have many differences, they both have one big problem in common, the price. As you can see, both programs are very expensive yearly subscriptions, which can cost a little bit too much for the normal user. Thankfully, more and more Windows games are being ported or even developed for Mac. A good example of this are games like Cyberpunk 2077 or No Man's Sky, which both now run perfectly on the Mac. Games like Resident Evil Village and Death Stranding have also been ported to Mac OS, with full support for Metal, Apple's graphics engine. Apple itself also pushes the topic forward. For example, with the release of a program called Game Porting Toolkit 2.0, a program that works similar to Crossover, and helps developers bring their Windows games over to the Mac. That means that over time, the amount of natively playable games on the Mac will increase, and you won't have to pay for expensive tools like Parallels or Crossover anymore. However, if you want to know whether a specific game runs on the Mac, whether natively, through Parallels, or using Crossover, definitely check out Apple Gaming Wiki. I'll leave a link in the video description. You can search for a title, and see what method works best, any known issues, and how good the performance is. It's super helpful, especially before buying or downloading a game. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll try to answer all of them. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content about Apple and tech. And let me know in the comments which games you play on your Mac and whether you prefer crossover, parallels, or native ports. I'm really curious to hear your experiences. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.